good morning. Hi, I'm Suzanne and I'd like to thank you for joining me again on a Tuesday morning. Today we are talking about pumpkins, pumpkins, pumpkins. <laughs> Here at Rogers Gardens, we have such a tradition of bringing in pumpkins just in time for our Halloween opening. We have a lot of pumpkins here. Um, a lot of our customers are super um, excited. They come in and they get towers of pumpkins and piles of pumpkins. And uh, we have everything from little tiny ones to big ones. But first I'm gonna tell you a little bit of pumpkin history. I have my notes here just in case I forget anything. But um, pumpkins come from what they believe is Central America. The natives grew them and utilized every part of them for uh, their food. Uh, it's funny, they didn't recognize eating the seeds until much later, but it was a great, great crop for them. The Native Americans in Northern America grew them even before they grew corns or beans. So that's, it's a really, really old and established food source for so many natives. And then when uh, the non-Native Americans came here, what happened is they learned to cook these as well in their big, huge wood-fired ovens, and they would slice off the top and fill it with milk and cream and spices and make it either a savory dish or a sweet dish. But um, it's always just been a really uh, good food source for so many people, and then, of course, brought to Europe and um, adapted and changed throughout all of the world with different varieties. As you can see here, we have so many different varieties. Um, one thing I learned while I was investigating the history of pumpkins that I thought was really fascinating, I had no idea, Illinois, number one pumpkin grower in the United States. And so um, kudos to you, Illinois. I'm uh, really fascinated with that. I would have thought California would be, just I don't know why, but um, so that's really, really interesting. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about growing pumpkins. Um, Pumpkins take a long time to grow. Little ones like this, not as much, but still take a good time to grow because they need to um, not just grow, but also to ripen and to harden off. You need to um, store these a little while so that the um, outside shell gets hard so that you can store these. Uh, some squash, like a zucchini, has a much softer outside, and of course you're gonna eat it quicker, but a lot of these you can store for much longer, up to a year for this one that we'll discuss in just a minute, but it's, it's a great storing food as long as you have a cool, dry place. When you're growing pumpkins, you want to start them early. You wanna start those seedlings probably in May if you're going to be uh, utilizing them for Halloween or for Thanksgiving, the fall, and storing them, you need to start those seeds early. Um, most pumpkins, from the time that you uh, see them flower to the time that you're going to be harvesting, the actual fruit is 90 to 120 days. So if you have not planted your pumpkins by the end of June, you probably won't have them in time for you know the holiday season. Um, that being said, we sell so many different kinds of seeds for different kinds of uh, squash and pumpkins and things like that. So you can find whatever you need here. Um, so let's start with some of our pumpkins. Um, we have small pumpkins. This one is actually called a sparkler. It's got this really pretty kind of a mottled the top. I'm not sure if you can see just how mottled it is, but it's one of my favorites and it usually comes with a stem like this. We have a lot of other small pumpkins. We have little orange ones, little white ones. We have these cute little mini knuckleheads, which I'll talk about in just a minute. They are adorable. And the really, really big fun thing for this year is this one, it's called a Kuyu. It's K-O-U-Y-O-U. -O -U. And um, this one comes in usually green. And then what happens is it turns this beautiful, beautiful, dusty, rosy, pinky color. And they are really, really neat just to see change color here. We have a lot of these this year. Uh, it is our first year and it is an exclusive to us. So it's pretty neat. We have little white ones. We have little blush ones, but um, oh, we even have these really cute little multicolored ones as well. So um, lots for your tabletop decorations. And I just, when I was grabbing pumpkins for this live, I noticed that we actually have our succulent topped pumpkins in. So if you like those, those are also a Rogers tradition and they look amazing right now. 
And if you haven't used them before as a table topper or something to put outside, they last for months. They are amazing. They're put on top of the pumpkin. They don't cut the pumpkin open. They just uh, put the succulents on top of it and it lasts it's easily six months, maybe even up to a year. As long as you keep that squash underneath it, the gourd or the pumpkin underneath it dry, they'll last for quite a long time. So other pumpkins that we have, of course, we have the regular, ordinary, perfect, traditional pumpkins like this. And this being super, super round, it is a, a baking pumpkin. So you can use it for your decorating. And then later on, maybe at Thanksgiving, you can cut it open and make a pie out of it. We have some really, really big pumpkins. Our um, orange pumpkins have a size. They're A through G and they're priced accordingly. And on the bottom of each pumpkin, there's a letter. So it'll tell you how much they cost. We have another customer favorite, the Jaredale. This is a pumpkin that I believe started in France. It is a great, great, great eating pumpkin. Um, once you're finished decorating with it, you can cut into it and bake it. It's very, very um, full flavored. It's got an orange flesh and it is really, really delicious. We have these beautiful, beautiful uh, fairy tale pumpkins. These are down here. They're really um, largely lobed, as they say. Really, really romantic looking, super fun. I think a lot of people really enjoy stacking these pumpkins. And I, I didn't bring a white flat one, but a white flat one there. And then this on top, you can have a really cute little pumpkin stack by your front door, just adorable. This guy, this is the knucklehead. It is my kind of favorite pumpkin. They come in with these green little bumpy weirdness on them. They'll eventually turn orange like this one here, but it's still really, really unique and really cool. It makes a great jack-o'-lantern. Jack-o'-lanterns. Jack-o'-lanterns are uh, another great story from pumpkins. They come from Ireland and it has to do with a man named Jack. He was called Stingy Jack and he made a deal with the devil and then he kind of reneged on it a few too many times and after he passed away, neither heaven nor hell would take him. So he wandered the earth after he took a turnip and carved out a face to help him light the way. And so uh, a lot of people in Ireland will light these, um, they'll use turnips or beets and now of course they use pumpkins as well just to ward away the bad spirits in the uh, darker months of the year. So that's a pretty cool thing, jack-o'-lantern. It's actually Jack of the Lantern. So a little piece of history there. Um, we have other gorgeous, oh, this I would say number one on the early pumpkin buyers list are these white pumpkins. We have the big flat ones that are really cool as well, but we have these beautiful, beautiful white, just perfect pumpkins. They look almost artificial, but they last forever. We have tiny little white pumpkins. So many great ones. We have gourds. We have some really crazy gourds this year. Super weird, super fun. You can throw them in a basket on your table with some of the smaller pumpkins and just use them for decorating. Just awesome. And there, if you can see this one over here, this is another really interesting pumpkin and it's just got a lot of weirdness on the outside. All of these pumpkins you can eat. Some taste a little more pumpkin-y good. Some taste a little more kind of squash-like. So like that butternut squash or, or a zucchini, kind of less sweet, more savory, but they're all really fun. So um, when you're picking out a pumpkin, you definitely want to try and if you're gonna be utilizing it later for cooking, try and find a pumpkin that doesn't have any nicks or cuts or anything like that so you can store it for a long time. Put it outside your back door in a nice shady spot, get ready for Halloween if you like, and then when you're done, you're just gonna cut it up and bake it in the oven. So that's pretty much it for pumpkins. I'm trying to think, I've gone through knuckleheads, I've gone through the Jaredale, the fairy tale. We do have Cinderella pumpkins, they're a little bit big for me to grab on the way here. They're big, they're similar to this, less lobed, but more red, and they are beautiful. Those are a super French um, pumpkin. So do, uh, 
Do we have any questions, Marissa? Yes, we do. Thank oh, you, right. Suzanne. So the first question is, do we sell seeds for the mini fairy tale pumpkins? We do. So the mini fairy tales, I'm not sure if we have them right now, but we usually sell them in the spring when there's plenty of time to get them going. Um, how do the pumpkins get the warts on them or whatever they're called? Some of them are just, it's just how they grow. And so then the growers will say, oh, look, this is kind of an interesting one. And they'll incorporate it into their marketing and, you know, kind of make us want it more. But this is a very specific kind of pumpkin. It doesn't have um, anything like sprayed on it or anything to make it this way. This is just a pumpkin that naturally has this weird bumpiness on it. All right, um, what soil or fertilizer is best to use growing pumpkins? So um, really, really good rich soil. Pumpkins take a lot because they are growing big. They are, you know, it's a lot. A lot of energy goes into this. So you are going to use the best soil you can. I would say use our Malibu compost incorporated in your soil. Water your pumpkin regularly. I mean, you need to make sure that this does not dry out. And super important with pumpkins and squashes and things like that, they have a tendency to get a little powdery mildew. So if you can try and keep water off of the leaves, you're gonna want to um, kind of incorporate your best practices for things like um, pests and um, trying to keep beetles and things off of it. You wanna put a little um, straw or some sort of mulch underneath the pumpkins to raise them up off the ground so that they're not sitting in the wet soil. And um, they're pretty easy actually. You just need to understand that they take a long time and you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on them. Make sure that, they're, um, that the flowers are getting pollinated. And then once you have a few pumpkins on your vine, if you want a big pumpkin, you're gonna to have to devote your vine to maybe just one or two pumpkins um, so that they can get big, so that the energy is definitely focused on one or two. And if you have, you know, if you're gonna be growing the smaller pumpkins like this, you will have a ton of them. Just, it's almost like growing patty pans. They're everywhere and just really, really fun. Can you grow pumpkins in raised beds? Yes, yes you can. You just need to, if it's a really, really high bed, you're gonna have to devote the entire bed to that and keeping it kind of in there. You can let it sort of grow down and onto the ground. That is a, a great way, as long as you have space around it. And um, I did wanna mention, there's the, the three sisters approach to a vegetable garden, which a lot of Native Americans did, which is corn. The beans would grow up the corn and the pumpkins would grow among it. So that's always a really fun thing to kind of utilize your space super well. All right, let's see. Are all pumpkins eatable? Yes, all of the pumpkins that we sell here are edible. They're um, super, super um, varied in taste, but um, this, like I said, that blue pumpkin, the Jaredale, that one is considered kind of like the best um, savory. And then the little round pumpkins here, perfect for cutting open, put it, making like a custard inside there, and then just baking it. With this lid on it, it is a beautiful centerpiece for a holiday meal. Can you grow pumpkins all year? Gosh, uh, no. Uh, it's, it takes a long time. Most places, it, it just, you need that warm weather the whole time. Do uh, we have any workshops on how to make succulent pumpkins? No, not right now. I'm sorry, this darn pandemic is just keeping us hunkered down. And But um, I do believe we have a YouTube video um, that'll show you how to do it. So um, if not, we will definitely get one up there in the future. But I, I'm pretty sure we've done a YouTube video on that. All right, that seems to be all the questions for today, Suzanne. Okay, Thank you. Great. Come on in. Um, as I said, we have tons of pumpkins. <laughs> we have tons of beautiful mums. It. We have our Halloween room, and then of course, in in October, we have our Christmas room, and it is coming. They're building it right now as we speak. Don't forget the succulent covered pumpkins that we have up in the front, and then we have RogersGardens.coms where you can shop online, pick up in the store, or have it shipped to you. We have our Facebook, our Instagram, our YouTube, and our Pinterest pages. Be sure and subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos, okay? That's it for today. We'll see you, uh, I think, next week.